Hello, I'm Crafty Patty, and I'm back again with another fun video. Today, I'm going to show you how to make beautiful gift boxes either out of scrapbook paper or out of fabric paper. I did a video a while back on fabric paper, so that's a much more detailed video. I'll leave a link to that video in the description box below. But it inspired me to do the fabric paper again, but only this time with a lot less layers, so easier to fold into beautiful boxes. All the supplies for this video will, as always, be in the description box below the video, so stay tuned and watch on how to make all these darling gift boxes. And if you keep watching, I have a bonus at the end of the video for you to watch as well. So lots of options, but keep in mind that the biggest square you'll be able to do is a 12 by 12 or smaller. Now they do come in different weights. This one here is a lot thinner than this one. Let's start by making our first box out of our scrapbook paper, which is 12 inches by 12 inches. Here's the bottom I'm going to show you how to make, and it will have a matching top with a beautiful flower or organic fold for the top of the box. Let's start our fold. This is the right side and this is the wrong side. What we're going to do is we're going to fold this in half. So bring your bottom up to the top and be as accurate as you can by making sure that it's perfectly matched up. And the more accurate it is, the better your box will be. And then once you're accurate, bring it down, crease that bottom. Let's open it up and let's go in the opposite direction and fold now this bottom to the top. If you want a real good crease, you can use a scoring tool or a bone folder and you just take it and you Move it along, that makes a really nice crease. So now we're going to take those creases. This is called a valley fold. And we're going to turn it to the opposite side and we're going to crease that again. We'll do the same for the other direction. We folded it this way and now we're going to fold it this way. Let's open that right up. This is the wrong side facing. And now we're going to bring our corner into the center, matching it as perfectly as we can. Once you've got it where you want it, crease down with your fingers and then use your bone folder. Let's come around and we're going to do the same thing with this corner. We're going to bring it right into that middle touching the other one as close as you can and as accurate as you can. Finger crease and use your bone folder. Let's do the other two corners. And what we're going to do is you're going to open up the top and the bottom. And then these sides are now going to get creased. So let's just turn it so it's easier to show you. And this one is going to come to this point. So this line here is coming to that middle point. So fold it right up, right up to that corner. And you can check your fold by making sure that your crease here is along the crease line of this fold, and your crease line here is along this fold. 
And once you can see that that is accurate, then you can press it down. And let's do the same for the other side. Right up to the center. This one will be a little easier because you can match and pull it right up so this line and this fold matches the one in the middle. So you can bring it right up. Not overlapping, but just so it butts right up together. Once you're happy with your fold, then give it a good crease. Let's do that again to the other sides. So let's turn this and let's bring this corner back in again. And we're going to bring that into the middle as well. You can also check the sides and make sure that your sides are matching up. And now let's open up our sides, just these ones. Let's open that right up, the top and the bottom. And now let's bring in our sides. And we're just going to do one more crease, just to make sure it's got both folds and in with this one. Okay, we're going to open that up. What we're going to do is the, here's your sides and here's our valley folds that we're going to push in like this and then use your thumbs to go like this and we're going to pull it up and now we've made our portion of our box all we have to do now is fold that in And let's do the same to the other side. And voila, you have made the bottom of your box. Now normally, origami, you don't need to glue anything. But being that this is a box, these might tend to flip up a little bit. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue underneath our little corners to hold it in place. This is just craft tack, um, unique. You can use any glue you want. This one bonds fabrics, glass, wood, leather, glitter, so far. So let's just do a little dabble do ya right here. You don't need to do the whole area, just enough in there. And when you're doing that, just make sure that it's into the edge here and then push it in. So you've got a nice, clean fold. And once you've glued down your corners, I like to just come in with my bone folder and just crease those tops and make it nice and creased. There you go. You have now made the bottom of your box. With your right side facing, we are now going to start by taking it corner to corner this time. So let's bring up our corner, matching up as best you can as always, and make your crease. Open that up and fold the opposite corner. And to accent those folds, we're just going to take it and we're going to bring it the other way around and just accent that fold again. This corner and also the other corner. Now with the wrong side facing, we're going to fold it in half. Open it up and fold the other way in half. And again, 
Let's reverse those folds. Open it up to the wrong side facing. Have your point coming towards you. And we're going to have it so this crease comes down to that crease. And this crease comes down to that crease. And then you're going to open that up. And so now you've got a little square and inside it should look like this. So now what we're going to do is we want to bring this corner down and we want to bring it down so it's one and three quarters down. Have this point match up to your crease line here. And I'm just making sure that my crease is at one and three quarters inches. Then I can come in with my bone folder and give it a good squish down. Let's turn that around and crease that again on the opposite side to make sure you've got a real good crease because this next step is a little tiny bit trickier. Again, you should have your open end here and the fold should be on the closed end. Now we're going to create what they call a sink fold. So this is actually going to sink down inside here. So we're going to just open it up like this and see how it's pointing up this way. I've got my one hand underneath and I've got it just so they're all open like this. And then I'm going to push down into the center here. I'm going to force that to come up. I'm going to force this side to come up. And it's a little bit tricky, but you can do it. See how I have to push it down in there. Then this one's coming up and you will get it. It just seems a little bit complicated at first. So I'm just working around, and this side here, I've got to fold that in. Keeping the folds, these folds up at the center down. So folding that one up, this one up, this one up, that one up. So you can grab these and do a little crease this way. Open it up, grab these two sides. And let's make it crease in this way. So once you've got it creased in, you'll see that what we've got now is we've pushed it down so we now have a sink fold. I've refolded it again so the points on the outside again. I'll try to show you that again because this is the trickiest part. So again, we're opening this up like so and I've got my hand underneath and I'm going to push the center point down so I've got my side my side and my side and my side all these sides are coming up and my center is going in so what I want now is I want these sides to come in. So I'm going to grab onto this and I'm going to grab onto this and I'm going to push these two so they're going into the middle like that. And now you've made your sink fold. Just practice that a little bit if you're having a hard time with that and you will get it. Our next folds. All this is the open, this is the fold on the top that we just did. Holding your finger at the top here, you're going to bring this down so this edge and this folded edge match the center fold of this one. So you're going to bring that right down like that 
and fold. Next, we've got this point, folding it right down, and it's coming right together with the other one. And once you've got these matched up, come in with your bone folder and bring it down. Let's turn it over to the back side and let's do that again. There's your center point. Now what we're going to do is we're going to open this all up. And as you can see inside, you've got this little hub, or they'll call that a square knot. So as you're holding this all down, you just keep pressing it down like this, go slowly, and you'll see that by pressing it all down, you're gonna form this little square knot in the center. And once it's all down in place, you can press the rest of it down. Isn't that cool? Now let's turn that to the right side. And what you've got here is, you'll see if you fold it up, you've got little ribs. You've got a rib here, you've got a rib here, a rib here, and a rib here. So I just take one of your ribs and you're gonna fold it in half. So this fold matches that crease on the bottom there. And do the same for all the other ones. Bring those back up. You can do another fold the opposite way. Now what you're going to be doing is you're going to be opening all these folds up. So just get it started with your thumb. You can press this open here and this is going to get folded down like, like that. And in here, you're just going to push it in there and just keep pressing down until you've made a nice crease on the top. You have to help it along a little bit and crease down. Let's do that again with this one. Opening up the back end so that goes down. Bring in your bone folder or chopstick, whatever you got. Push it right in there. Wiggle it around, bring this forward, make sure it's not buckled up again. So let's just bring that back. If you've got a buckle like that, just bring it back in and make sure that fold is right up like that and bring it back down again. Just work it until you've got a nice fold. You can bring it to the sides open it up and fold. Let's fold all of our corners, corner to corner, all in like so. And you'll see that you've got some extra bits on each corner. We're gonna cut those off so when we go to fold our sides in, there will be less bulk to fold. So just come in and cut those off. Now we're gonna fold in all our edges. So here's our fold here. So approximately, one inch and one eighth. Go around and do that to all of your sides. And now what I want you to do is take your box bottom, put it inside and do a little test 
make sure that your top is going to fit your bottom. If not, and you've made it too small, then go back and make this a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller so it fits snugly but not too big and not too small. Once you've made your creases, let's open up our top, open up our bottom, bring in our sides, give it a crease, bring in our side, give it a crease, and then what we're going to do is using our fingers, we're going to pop this in again like we did before. And now this is going to come up and it's going to tuck down. And this time, instead of gluing them, this little end is going to pop into our middle little hub. So this, let's bend it back. And it's going to go and tuck right inside the hub. I call it the hub, but whatever you want to call it. There's lots of little names for it. Love knots and... Okay, there's that one. Let's go around and we'll do the same to this side again. And then we'll just come around and tuck these ones in as well. Now, before we do any more extra creasing, grab the bottom of your box and make sure the top is going to fit your bottom. If it's a little bit snug, you might need to make some adjustments and you can just pull out your side just that little bit more. Make your crease again and try it again. And look at that. It's a beautiful fit. So now that you know that it's going to fit, you can take that top off and let's make our final creases. Let's give her a little another test. And a nice snug fit. Okay, let's finish the top of our flower on the top of this box and this one will be complete. And pop it in there, give it a little squeeze. Pop it in there. Squeeze, squeeze it up. And then you can just take it and bring them up a little bit more. Just open it up a little bit more. Have your flower pop up in the middle. On this particular box, because we've got a white background, the white square knot in the middle works just fine. But if you want to cover it up, you can certainly do that like I've done on this one. And I've just cut a little picture of a bird and I've pasted it to the inside. I will demonstrate the next box still using scrapbook paper because it's just easier to fold. Now, this time I'm going to show you also how to change up the size of your box to make it a little higher or make it a little narrower. The first parts of the fold for the bottom of the box will be the same and I'll stop when we have to do our change to change up our height and width. Our first box measured four and a quarter inches. Let's make this one not as wide, but taller. So to do that, instead of folding right to that middle line like we did before, we are going to go past that middle line and you can decide how far you want to go. It doesn't matter as long as all your sides are the same. 
So let's go past that middle mark and let's make this, let's say, two and a half inches up. And let's crease that and bring it the same for the other side. And I'm using the grid marks on my cutting mat, which makes it really easy so I can measure up two and a half inches on both sides. And you're going to do that same measurement on all four sides. And now, just like before, you're going to finish your box by opening the top and bottom, bringing your side, continue that crease top and bottom, other side, crease up and bottom. And the same as before, bending in, and you'll notice that you will have an excess inside. With the paper, you don't need to cut it off. You can leave it. And then again, folding it in as always. And the same as the other side. And now, you can see, you've now got a box that is a lot smaller in width. And it's taller in height. So that's how you vary the size. I'll make a different lid for you this time. So let's bring our bottom up to our top. And let's bring this left over to the right. I'm just going to open that and reverse it. And let's see, I'm just a little bit off here, so I'm going to fix that fold there. And then open it back up so we're on the right side. You'll see that we've got two folds here, a solid fold here, and our openings down here. So we want to keep our openings over here. This is our two-fold. We're going to bring this over one and a half inches. Next fold, open that up. Then put your finger on your fold. This edge is going to match up to this edge here. So bringing it down and match up that edge. Next fold, this one's coming over one and a half inches. And let's open this up. And we're going to crease those in the opposite direction. So you can see your one crease here. Make sure that's a good crease. Do it the other way. Because the way we creased here, it's sinking in this way, which is what we want. We're going to take our two sides and you're going to just fold it like that. See? It's automatically going to want to go like that. So we've got this side to the right. And we've got this one going to the left on the back side. And now we're going to take this one and move it to the top. And now we've made this cute little box on the top. Let's open this up and we're going to push this back to the other side. Folding it back to keep our little square in the middle. So let's take this to the other side. And we'll finish up making our lid 
that will fit our bottom. We're going to start by bringing our corners in again. Let's bring our box on top, set this on our grid lines here, and we can see that if I put our box right in the middle, we've got about one and a half on each side, one and a half inches. So we need to make our lid a generous one and one quarter. So let's fold these up and back on my grid line. And here's my one and a quarter. It's a generous one and a quarter. Once you get that side done, make sure you're even everywhere and then bring down this side to that generous one and a quarter and then fold it down and do the same for the other sides. And same as always, open the top and the bottom, fold in your sides, crease that last bend up from the top here, and bring in your sides. And let's see how our top fits our bottom now. Oh, beautiful. Perfect fit. And now you just need to come in and open up your tops here. Bring it up a little bit and you've got that bit of little twisted top. And there we've made two different sizes out of a 12 inch square. There we've got one that's taller and one that's wider. We've got the flower and we've got a twist. Now we'll do one more and we'll do it with the fabric paper. I have a whole nother video on making fabric paper so I'm just going to touch on this briefly just so you have an option to make your boxes with fabric paper as well. So I'm just using a really thin piece of material you can use quilting cotton whatever you have just really thin. I'm using glue all and I mix it 50% glue 50% water. A brush to put on your glue and for this project I'm only going to need two napkins and I've got 30 inch napkins to fit the project I'm going to do for this one. Most of the napkins I have purchased have been three ply and we only want two plies for our project today so I just take my fingers and wet them and if you just pull it like this you'll see that there's three layers there. There's one, there's two, and there's three. So just pull those apart, and you'll only be using two layers, one, and then your top layer to finish it off. And two layers for fabric boxes is perfect. Any more than that, and it's just way too heavy and way too hard to fold. And the reason I've cut this to 13 and a half inches is because my napkins are 13 inches. So that'll fit on perfectly. And that leaves me some room to score up this nicely after we're finished with our glue.
I placed the wet fabric paper on a hanger with some clips and hung it to the back of my chair. It has now dried overnight and it's ready to be cut to size and we can make it into our fabric boxes. I managed to get a 12 and 3 quarters inch square out of our fabric paper and I've already done the bottom because it's identical fold to this one and this one. I did all the bottoms the same just to make it easy. So now that we've got our bottom done, let's make another top and we'll just do a little bit of a variation to this twist. The first steps of the folds will be similar to this one and I will stop where we make the change to change it into a little bit of a different pattern for the top. Now the next step how this varies is we're going to fold these ribs in half. So this fold is matching the crease on that line there. So we'll go around fold and you can lift it back up again and do that to all four of the ribs. Okay, let's put it back to the way it was. So we've got our square in the middle. Now we're going to take one of these ribs, bring it right up, and we're going to put our finger in the end here, and we're going to start to crease it down, and then just folding it underneath our center little hub. And go as far as that goes for now. Okay, let's do the next one. Bring it up. There's the end of our hub. Pushing it down right to our little hub. So now you're just going to be folding those over so it makes a bend like that. Let's do this one. Folding it over. Make sure you got some nice good angles and a point on that hub. Working it up. And forcing it back down. Do the next one up and force it down. And the last one up and down. So let's open up our little hub again and just squish it down for now. And we're going to turn over and finish the top of our box so we can go on to our bottom. Next step, same as before. Okay, 
And again, cut off our little excess. At the bottom of your box and place it in the middle. I've got one and a quarter on this side. I've got one and a quarter on this side. I'm happy with the way the inside of the lid looks, but if you're not happy with, let's say, the bottom, I've got a little bit of a gap in here. I didn't get a perfect fold. So you can always come in and rip up another napkin and add it to the bottom. So just come in with some more glue, put it into the bottom of your box, Pop in another piece of napkin. Add your glue on the top. And now you have a really beautiful bottom. And the way this napkin worked out, we've got a lot of white on the top, which is fine. It looks like a white ribbon on the top. But if you want to change it up again, a little bit more glue on the top. And I ripped out a little blue bird. We can put a little blue bird right up on the top. That's how quick it is to change up the design. And there you go. When that's dry enough, then you can just come in and just bring up your little corners. And that's the finish portion of your cute little top for this box. Here's another fabric paper box I made. This was made out of a 17 inch piece of fabric paper. And I did the same lid as we did on the last one. And so what I'm saying is that you can vary the size of your boxes depending on the size of your first square. I didn't show you this one because I used four to five layers of napkins for the fabric paper and I just found it too hard to fold. But keep in mind, the more layers, the stiffer it is, the harder it is to fold. So there's a little bit of a compromise there. And if you fold it just right, it will even fly. Okay, I'll show you how to make it, so keep watching. Start by taking your money. It doesn't matter what currency, as long as you fold it into a perfect square. So just fold it in half, bring up your folded edge up to the top edge, and then making a perfect little point on the one side and then crease down. And then you're going to fold over your excess of whatever bill you're working with, a perfect square. So whether it be Canadian, US, Australian, it doesn't matter. So let's open that up. We're going to make a crease this way and we're going to make one more on the corner to corner. So let's just bring this over and let's make a crease to fold it in half one way. I just used my, you can use a, a bone folder like this if you want to sharpen your edges or just use your fingernail. Open it up. And let's crease over to the other side. And we've already made our one 
fold this way, but I'm going to do that again just to reinforce that fold. And let's open it up and go corner to corner the other way. And if you've got excess on your bills like I have, don't worry about that too much. We will deal with that in a moment. So take your folded edge on the top, hold it right in the middle of all those folds, and we're just going to push this down and crease that one fold again. Crease this fold here and just push it down so it's all in the middle. Just hold on to those two edges there and just push it in. And it will automatically make your fold on the inside there. Let's turn it over and do exactly the same thing to the other side. Holding it in, here's your crease, your crease. This gets tucked inside. If you hold these two exactly level, the same side, then that will automatically crease inside perfectly for you. Now we're going to open this up. Inside you'll have one flap. You've got these two in the middle and you've got this on the other side. What we're going to be doing now is we're opening this up and we're going to be folding so this edge comes over and matches this edge on the other side like so. Now it's easier for me to do that on the table so I just have to put that down. And you're going to push this up. You can use your thumb to go inside if you need to. And that's going to push right up to the edge of your other back fold right there. Let's do the same thing to this side. Again, we're bringing this edge over to this middle edge here, right to there. I'm trying to lift this up so you can see what I'm doing, but it's easier to work on the table. So I'll bring it back down again so I can do it. And I just bring my other side back again. There we go. And then if you've got both of these pushed up to your sides, then this can just bend over, read it that crease, bend it up, and then you can use your thumb if you need to. And you're just going to continue that right up the other side. And the same with this one. Just bring it right up to a point like so. Let's do that again to the other side. So you've got your folds on on both sides. Now what I want you to do is take your right and move it to the left. Let's crease that in place. And we're gonna take the left front and move it to the right side. So we have that. So right now you'll probably have one with the extra bulky fold in it and this one doesn't. So let's use this side with the extra bulky to make the tail and this one is going to be the head. So holding on right here, we're going to take your tail and you're going to pull it down like that. And it just opens it up and then you're just going to crease it so it keeps that position like so. And then just do a little twist on the tail just enough to make it look like it's a tail. And let's do the head. Head again, holding here, and then taking your head and we're going to pull it down and crease by pushing it in. And then for the head, you can use your thumbnail if you want, and we're just going to bend it down just a little like that. So you've got the same distance on each side. And then once you're left happy with the amount you've got it, 
then this part, that little middle crease is going to crease up and you're just going to squish it down. And there you've made your little bird head. Bring your wings up. And then just do a little bit of a bend on the wing, a little bit of a bend on the wing here. And if you hold it here and then pull up in here, then it should fly. If you've done a good job, there he is. Oh, these little birds are so cute. To make it nicer so the birds have somewhere to nest, I just scrunched up a little bit of tissue paper. And then the little birds can sit in there. And on goes the lid. And that makes a darling little gift for anybody. She can keep the box or she can re-gift it. And then when she opens it up, she'll see all those little birds that are ready to fly with her. Thank you.